A, good, a very good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Tomasek Polytechnic School of Applied Science Diploma in Pharmaceutical Science webinar. Uh, my name is Dr. Maisha, so I'm the course chair for the Diploma in Pharmaceutical Science. So in this webinar, we hope we'll be able to share with you what you'll be learning um, in this course and also what are some of the activities that our students will get to participate in um, in this course. We're also very happy today uh, that we have with us our industry partners who will be sharing with us what are the internship and also job opportunities available for our students and graduates. We also have with us our PHS alumni and also our current year three student who will be sharing with us on their experience um, in this diploma course. So let me first introduce you to our panels of speakers today. So we have uh, with us today, Ms. Uh, Shirley Pang, who is the principal pharmacist in Changi General Hospital. Ms. Fu Shi Hui, who is a pharmacy technician from Changi General Hospital as well. Uh, Ms. Nuri Muhammad Zaini, who is our alumni. She's currently doing the degree in radiation therapy in SIT. And also um, we have with us our current year three student, Nataline Lee, who is doing her internship uh, in Ng Ting Fong General Hospital. All right, so before um, I invite the speakers uh, to do their sharing, let me um, briefly share with you uh, what you'll be learning, uh, what you can look forward to um, in this Diploma in Pharmaceutical Science course. All right, so the Diploma in Pharmaceutical Science course is a broad-based uh, curriculum that encompasses pharmacy practice, pharmaceutical manufacturing, and also analysis. Um, in the pharmacy practice aspect of the course, students will learn how different medications can be used to treat the different disease conditions. Um, they will also learn um, how to process prescriptions, pick and pack medications, and very importantly, they also will learn how to counsel patients on the safe use of medications. Um, for pharmaceutical manufacturing and analysis, students will learn how medications are being manufactured and also tested. Um, under the uh, current good manufacturing practice to assure that um, they assure the safety and also quality um, of the medications uh, before they are being um, uh, shared with the consumers and also um, and the patients. All right, so in this uh, Diploma in Pharmaceutical Science course, we have two elective cluster, which our students can choose to do in year three. Uh, we have namely the pharmacy practice elective clusters. Uh, so this cluster is for students who would like to further deepen their knowledge in the clinical aspect of the course. Uh, for students who are keen to um, join the pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical manufacturing industry, they may choose the um, pharmaceuticals and biologics elective cluster in year three. Um, the knowledge and skills that our students learn in this course will allow them to enjoy meaningful and rewarding career as pharmacy technicians in the hospitals and retail pharmacies. They can also take on various job roles um, in the leading pharmaceuticals and biopharmaceutical companies, such as they can work as process technician where they will be involved in drug manufacturing. They can also work as quality assurance and quality control um, executives, as well as sales and marketing executives. Um, students can also look forward to career as laboratory analysts or technicians in the analytical and research laboratories. Um, I also like to mention our diploma course is also aligned to the Ministry of Health competency standards for pharmacy technicians. So our broad-based curriculum will enable our graduates, uh, will equip our graduates with um, in-demand transferable skills that will allow them not only to join the um, various um, aspects of the pharmaceutical industry, but also to enjoy career opportunities in a diverse range of health, uh, allied health professions um, and also careers beyond the pharmaceutical science industries. Okay, so without further ado, let me now invite our first in, um, two industry speakers, uh, Ms. Shirley Pang and Ms. Fu Shi Hui from Changi General Hospital, um, who is our long-term internship partner who have helped to train our interns over the years. Um, so Ms. Shirley Pang is the principal pharmacist in Changi General Hospital. She is, um, has already worked in um, Changi General Hospital for almost seven years um, as the main outpatient pharmacy, uh, at the main outpatient pharmacy. Prior to that, she has about nine years of experience in the retail pharmacy. And she's also one of the member of the pharmacy um, technician training and development committee that looks into developing competency standards for our pharmacy technicians. Okay, so let me now invite Ms. Pang to share her insights on the healthcare industry and more specifically, on the career prospects for pharmacy technician in the hospital pharmacy. Ms. Pang, please. Hi, 
Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shirley from uh, Changi General Hospital, currently uh, based in the outpatient pharmacy. So uh, I will begin with an overview of the uh, typical structure of a pharmacy in the hospital. Uh, it's basically uh, made out of uh, the outpatient pharmacy who will serve the uh, outpatient clinic patients, and we have the inpatient uh, pharmacy. Uh, and also the discharge pharmacy where we will be serving the ward patients and after, thereafter when they are being discharged. We have a compounding lab uh, for fulfilling customized medication when the dose or the combination is not available commercially. There's also the retail pharmacy and the A&E pharmacy uh, that mix up uh, all the different aspects of a hospital pharmacy. Yeah. So uh, what does the pharmacy technician do? Okay, so uh, in the next slide, you might see a uh, a summary of uh, the basic job roles of what a uh, hospital pharmacy technician may be involved in. Our PTs are actually the essential support for the smooth running of a healthy pharmacy. And just to provide a brief overview, um, the processing of medication orders and patient care services are the most basic role of a pharmacy technician's job. Okay. So uh, to process medication orders it involves uh, keying of the orders, it pack, uh, involves packing of the medications, uh, 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 etc. And also uh, in terms of patient care, not just the pharmacists, but our pharmacy technicians will be involved in terms of uh, the dispensing of medication and counseling to the patients, whereby they will help to ensure that the patients are, uh, understand the, the medications better and also to counsel them on the proper use of their medication. And uh, other than that, um, our pharmacy technicians will also be managing the uh, inventory of the medication by ensuring there's healthy stock levels and also uh, to ensure that the uh, expiry date is also appropriate for the dispensing. Okay. And uh, in the hospital, we do use automation to uh, help us to ensure safe and accurate supply of medications to patients. So our pharmacy technicians come in uh, to help with the support and maintenance of the operation of the automation system. And uh, you might, some of you might have heard of our medication delivery services, which is fast becoming a fixture in hospital pharmacy, to be honest, ever since COVID started. And uh, our pharmacy technicians actually will support the delivery at different points of the workflow of the delivery service. And um, as you progress in your job, in your role as a pharmacy technician in the hospital, you also start to establish operational and people skills, okay, which will include being familiar uh, with building methods, to learn to manage people and infrastructure resources, and taking up of supervisory roles. Okay, so in the next slide, you might see a few snapshots of uh, the um, various areas of the pharmacy that you may be involved in as a pharmacy technician in the hospital. And being a hospital pharmacy, uh, medication has to be supplied 24 seven, depending on where, uh, which part of the pharmacy it is. So there might be a requirement to work in shifts, but do be assured that there are uh, necessary uh, planning to ensure that it does not compromise the health and the uh, and the rest of the staff. Yeah. Okay. So um, other than um, the daily routine uh, of uh, of the basic job roles, right? Life as a as a pharmacy technician does not end here. So in the next slide, you will see uh, what else you can look forward to uh, and uh, while working in the hospital. Okay. So you will continually upgrade your skills and your knowledge through in-house continuing education. We do send our um, uh, pharmacy technicians for courses that will help them further hone their skills in their roles. And also um, there will be opportunities to take part in innovation and quality um, management projects and improvement projects that can lead to collaboration with other pharmacists and even other healthcare professionals like nurses or doctors. Yeah. And um, with career progression, there will also be opportunities to uh, hone your management skills. Okay, and where that is where you will cultivate leadership qualities. Uh, and also the fun aspect of uh, working in the pharmacy, we are basically a very big family in the hospital. We can comprise over hundreds to two hundred uh, pharmacy staff, to be honest. So you will have the chance to be involved in the planning of events such as team bonding activities. And we also have pharmacy related um, events such as pharmacy week, where our pharmacy technicians are also actively involved in. Yeah. So in the next slide, you will see that there is a simple representation of the career progression for a pharmacy technician at the hospital. Okay. So working um, in the hospital, you start off as a pharmacy technician and then you will 
progress on to become a senior and thereafter uh, to be an executive. So um, to work in the hospital pharmacy is a dynamic experience and it will allow you to interact with patients or with people from all walks of life. Okay, and it provides an opportunity to better patients' quality of life also. And so hopefully at the end of the day at the hospital pharmacy, you will be able to find fulfillment in what you do. Okay, and uh, to help you understand a little more about what our pharmacy technician uh, experience in their day-to-day -day job, I have my colleague Shi Hui who will share her experience uh, working in the hospital and she's also a domestic poly alumni. So I'll hand it over to her now. So hello everyone, I'm Shi Hui and I've worked in Changhe General Hospital for six years. I'm based in the discharge pharmacy in the integrated building, which serves mainly the geriatric, neurological, psychological patients, which are from the outpatient and discharge pharmacy. So when I first took up the job as a pharmacy technician, I thought that a pharmacy technician is a behind the scene job and what I have to do is just to pack medicine accurately. Never did I know that we are also required to provide good quality uh, patient's care, which includes empathy towards patients and ensure that patients really understand their medicines well. So this is more significant, especially for the elderly who usually take multiple medications and get confused frequently. So not many people understand the seriousness of taking the wrong dose. However, it can affect them more than they realize. So for example, hypertension medicines have been taken regularly, but some patients feel that their conditions are stable and have decided to stop their medicine by themselves. Who knows, a few days later, the patient's blood pressure shoot up and the patient suffers strokes. So this is why it is important as a pharmacy technician, we have to educate patients on their compliance to medications. And these are some of the knowledge that I do not know before I become a pharmacy technician. So doctors help to diagnose, pharmacists help to review doctor's order, and we, the pharmacy technicians, assist in ensuring smooth operation on the ground so patients can obtain their medication in a timely manner and also assist in educating patients with their medications while taking order and dispensing. So learning does not stop after graduation. I was provided with proper training to fulfill my roles and was given the opportunity to attend the advanced diploma course in the pharmaceutical science to upgrade my sales set. So this is what keeps me in the job. I want to help people using what I have learned. Sometimes I will feel uh, tired and many times I thought of quit, but however, I remember the job satisfaction I get from serving the patients and I will persevere on. So that's why I continue to work as a pharmacy technician. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Pang, and also uh, Shi Hui for the sharing, um, you know, on the career prospect as well as the uh, career, pros uh, you know, the career progression as well as the job scope uh, for pharmacy technicians in the hospital. Um, I also like to mention um, Shi Hui is actually also our um, diploma in pharmaceutical science alumni. So it's really very, um, you know, heartening to hear that she's enjoying what she's doing now and also given a lot of opportunities to upgrade herself. Thank you once again. Um, so I'd like to just inform everyone that the Q&A platform is open for questions. Uh, you may post your questions uh, using the QR code that is uh, currently uh, shown on the screen. Okay. Um, so before I invite our next two speakers, let us now take a look at a short video um, prepared by our students. Thank you. Hey, that looks familiar. What are you looking at? Uh, just some poly courses. Really? What courses are you looking at? Well, actually I'm looking at the same course as you, Diploma in Pharmaceutical Science. Really? But why? Well, because you shared so many interesting experiences back when you were in this course and I just wanted to know more about it. So can you tell me? Sure, of course. Yeah. I remember that in my first year, we studied foundation subjects like Human Anatomy and Physiology and Basic Pathology and Immunology. It was cool to discover how the whole body and diseases are linked together. So, do we need to study chemistry in this course? Yeah, of course. And I mean, if you love chemistry, you'll love the course. The knowledge of chemistry is essential in drug development and analysis. So it is important for us to learn chemistry. I always wonder, what do you like most about this course? Well, I'm all about the medicine. <laughs> in this course, you learn how medicines work in the body, their side effects, and how the body clears out these medicines too. 
so you get to master these key principles of drug action and clinical drug knowledge. And of course, not forgetting to learn about pharmaceutical legislation and marketing of medicines. Oh yeah, uh, another important skill you need to learn is how to effectively communicate with other patients. You will get opportunities to practice your skills to counsel patients as a pharmacy technician. Our role is to educate and empower patients to take charge of their health. Besides being a pharmacy technician, students in this diploma can also be a lab analyst or a production technician, where they will apply the concepts of current good manufacturing practices to ensure that the manufactured medicines meet both the safety and quality standards. Subjects taught in the pharmaceutical and biologics manufacturing cluster will allow students to broaden their skills in the manufacturing, sampling, and testing of pharmaceuticals. Uh, so actually, uh, I need to go already, but do you have any more questions? No, I'm okay. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, bye, have fun doing your poly stuff. Bye. So I hope you found um, the video informative and also um, the video gave you a glimpse of what our students in the Diploma in Pharmaceutical Science course uh, will be learning. Um, so next up, we have our PHS alumni, Nuri, to share about her experience after graduation. Nuri graduated from the Diploma in Pharmaceutical Science course in May this year, and she's currently pursuing her degree in radiation therapy in SIT. Um, I also like to mention that Nuri has been awarded the Ministry of Health Holding Healthcare Merit Award. Um, so without further ado, Nuri, please. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So um, I hope everyone's doing fine and coping well with school. So I'm Nuri, and uh, yes, I graduated from PHS earlier this March, and I'm currently pursuing radiation therapy in SIT. Uh, so just a brief information about my educational background. I was from the NA stream and I went through the uh, Poly Foundation program uh, and eventually graduated out of Poly with a 3.59 CGPA. So just a disclaimer, I'm really just an average student. And the reason why I'm saying this is because as a Poly student, I think we often think that um, you know only the elites would get into the uni or even get scholarships. But it really um, is not true. And I hope um, all of you continue to um, see the great side to it. So with that being said, um, let me just get on with my sharing about how I got to where I am today. But before I get into my sharing, um, so some of you might actually um, wonder what is radiation therapy, right? Because, you know, in, in the first place, there is a very niche industry and it is also often confused with diagnostic radiography. So let me just clarify what it is. So radiation therapy itself um, is actually one of the many cancer treatments that are available today. And a radiation therapist is basically a person who um, administers radiation to kill and shrink cancer tumors. So radio radiographers, on the other hand, uh, they are basically the photographers in the, med in the medical field. And uh, they work with radiation imaging machines, so such like um, things like your uh, x-rays and as well as MRIs. And these images actually help in the diagnosis um, of different uh, conditions. So you must be thinking, so why did I decide to move out of the pharmaceutical industry? And um, yeah, so the main reason is because um, I decided to um, pursue further studies is because uh, more due to a shift in interest. I was interested in treating others and wanted to directly impact the lives of patients by treating them. At the same time, I also realized that I had an interest in oncology through mentorship networking programs uh, at Cancer Science Institute uh, that was organized by TP, as well as through internship program uh, experience uh, as an oncology marketing intern at AstraZeneca. So um, this actually made me realize that radiation therapy would be the most suitable course of study and as well as career option. So um, yeah, all in all, those were the main reasons why I chose to pursue radiation therapy. But did I ever regret taking on a diploma in pharmaceutical science? Um, I would say no. I feel that the diploma has really thoroughly trained each and every one of us to be career ready and competent healthcare um, workers through modules that greatly emphasize on patient interaction and clinical knowledge, as mentioned earlier through the video and as well as um, Dr. Maisha's sharing. And in my case, it has definitely enabled me to grasp concepts taught in uni much more easily. And I can definitely foresee myself putting the patient interaction skills um, that I learned in TB to good use during our annual clinical attachments. So for poly mod modules that focus on pathology and pharmacology um, would also provide a solid foundation for the pathology and pharmaco mods in uni. So for any of you um, who are considering um, allied health careers in future, you can definitely be sure to look forward to more pharmaco mods in uni. 
Um, all in all, I would say that the pharmaceutical science diploma um, is really not one that is um, specific. And basically, the things that you learn in diploma can definitely be applied to different sectors as well. So for example, you know, you have your modules on pharmaceutical marketing and legislation, cell biology, um, pathology modules, you know, these are the modules that will actually provide you a greater advantage if you ever plan to shift um, to business or other healthcare causes, or even if you intend to further um, uh, study or, or continue to join into the research industry or purely science causes. So now with that, uh, let's move on to life after graduation, which is really something that every student looks forward to until the day actually arrives. So post-grad, I actually spent a lot of time um, doing research on radiation therapy because I was really interested in it and um, you know the different programs that were of interest to me but bear in mind at this point in time I already had at least like 10 different backup plans that I was really open to because um, I was really afraid that I wouldn't get into the course that I was really interested in so my backup plans actually ranged from taking a gap year and getting a job as a farm tech or a radiography assistant to actually allow me to make a better decision to decide um, whether the industry is really for me to pursuing other university studies that were relevant to oncology so um, in fact, I would actually highly recommend everyone to start listing down your possible plans that you might be open to um, as early as possible for you to have a clearer idea on the different means for you to um, achieve your aspirations. So I tried my luck at applying to the different universities and as well as jobs that are considered, but unfortunately, um, I did not receive any um, replies or calls from any of the hospitals or organizations that I actually applied to due to the escalating COVID situation at the time. So this actually left me without a job for the next few months. But to make the most out of the situation, I actually used a lot of my free time to actually source up for scholarships, you know, considering that, you know, um, uni tuition fees are really not um, cheap at all. Um, it can actually be financially draining. Um, yeah, so I sourced up for scholarships, you know, prepared for interviews and spent a whole lot of time discovering on the real reasons as to why I was so drawn to radiation therapy. And I really considered as to whether um, it was really truly something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So I actually also used the course credits uh, offered to TP graduates to upgrade myself by taking up short courses like um, Introduction to Behavioral Insights and as well as Python Coding, which is basically a very um, essential skill to have um, in this current, um, current world, digital world. So I would say that the post whole graduation period, um, the whole post graduation period, you know, was really mentally challenging and it was filled with anxiety. You know, everyone was waiting for letters from employers stating that they've been hired for their first ever job in the healthcare industry or even waiting for the university acceptance letters. But months later, I was offered radiation therapy as well as the Healthcare Merit Award under MOHH, um, which fully covered my tuition fees in uni and as well as um, secured my job overseas. Uh, so sorry, secured my job uh, post graduation at uh, National Cancer Center, Singapore. So as mentioned earlier, I'm really just an average student um, who just graduated with a GPA of 3.59. And just like many others, I occasionally slept through lectures as well. So essentially what I really gathered out of this whole situation was that in the end, no matter what GPA you graduate with, it really entirely boils down to how much you really want to want something and really how much effort you really want to put in to achieve your dreams and to realize your dreams. And finally, I really, really can't stress the importance of, um, you know, finding your inner purpose um, in life enough. You know, finding your inner purpose really, truly allows you to find that little fire that is burning inside of you that will one day burn bright enough um, to light up the whole entire world to make a difference in the lives of many others for the better. So yeah, that's all for my sharing. Thank you. So sorry. Okay. Um. Thank you once again, uh, Nuri, for your um, insightful sharing. Um. So I'm very glad to hear um how you know she shared about how her course, the diploma in pharmaceutical science course, uh, has prepared her well. Um, for the radiation therapy course in SIT. Uh, but I think more importantly is also how um, programs such as the mentorship program and also the internship has helped her to, you know, decide on, um, you know, this, this um, degree program. All right. Thank you so much, Nuri. Okay. So next up, we have um, our year three student, uh, Nataline. Okay. So Nataline is from um, the pharmacy practice elective cluster. 
and she's currently doing her internship in Ng Ting Fong General Hospital. Um, Nataline joined the Diploma in Pharmaceutical Science course um, straight after her Poly Foundation program in TP. So she's an active member of the School of Applied Science Studies Club and she was appointed the club's vice president when she was in year two. So as a student leader, Nataline helped to plan and organize uh, activities and events for the school, um, the, the students from the School of Applied Science. So Nataline will be sharing with us why she chose the Diploma in Pharmaceutical Science course and also her experience um, as a student in this course as well as her internship experience. Nataline, please. Thank you, Dr. Maisha, for the introduction. So hi, everyone. My name is Nataline. And as mentioned, I'm a third year student now in the Diploma of Pharmaceutical Science specializing in pharmacy practice. So I shared with Dr. Maisha, I entered TP via the Bali Foundation program initially upon completing my N-levels. So at that time, I was not really sure of what causes that I wanted to choose, but I came across pharmacy, pharmaceutical science during the open house that I visited and thought that it was very interesting because it was, unlike other science modules, it was kind of, it was kind of related to both healthcare science as well as like uh, interacting with people and also chemistry. So I was very interested in the course and that's why I decided to apply. But anyway, here at TP Pharmaceutical Science, it offers two electives, which are pharmacy practice and biopharm, both of which to me are very similar, but also very different. While as shown in the video just now, pharmacy practice focuses more on patient care, healthcare management, and the legislation. The biopharm elective is actually a whole nother world, which introduces you on how medications are being developed and the whole process behind it. So the diploma actually exposes us to both electives prior to the final selection through various model, modules in our first two years, which in my opinion guided me well in discovering what I was more interested in. In this case, it was pharmacy practice. So also as someone without a biology background, because I didn't take biology back in secondary school, the first year of diploma really helped me build my foundation as everyone had to take core modules related to uh, human anatomy and physiology, basic microbiology, organic chemistry, and inorganic chemistry, which definitely gave me a good foundation to start off my polytechnic years. So after those modules, we took on more specific, we, we took on more spe diploma specific modules, which looking back really helped me prepare for my internship. An example I can give was that we were actually trained on how to dispense medications from as early as my second semester in year one. So each semester we have reoccurring modules that uh, that they teach. So we start with from the foundation and then they just add on and teach us more to really hone our skills to really ensure that we are prepared to go out into the industry. Anyways, on top of the core modules, so the students, all students in TP also undergo fundamental modules which do not directly relate to our diploma. So these modules include included global studies, innovation and entrepreneurship, as well as communication modules. So the, fund mod the fundamental modules mainly takes care of our holistic development and prepares us for the working world, which was very useful as the modules taught me on things like how to interact with people from different cultures in a working setting, how to create a resume, how to ace an interview, and even public speaking skills, which are actually really, really useful for the working world, though it may seem like a little dreading in school. Uh, as a year three student now, after going through all those modules, I really see how those modules were really important, and I'm super glad that TP actually incorporated that into our diplomas. Hence, over here now, to briefly summarize how these modules helped me prepare for the industry, my internship and modules I did through the first five semesters were like puzzle pieces and as I progressed into the diploma, more of these puzzle pieces are like pieced together to eventually form this puzzle which in this case is the knowledge and skill set I require to step into the industry. Anyways, academic details aside, TP also has a wide variety of CCAs and plans many activities for students to participate in to add some flavour into our student life. So students can choose from a wide variety of clubs and so and art societies and also sports teams. There are also many interest groups at diploma and school level for students to take on leadership roles and organize activities for students of their own diploma or school. So for me, I actually joined the Applied Science Studies Club as a subcommittee member when I was in year one, where I helped to plan and organize activities for the Applied Science School students. So following, I got the opportunity to be elected as the vice president of the studies club in year two. And I'm very grateful for this opportunity as it really helped me grow as an individual and develop my leadership skills. I also got 
So through these opportunities, I also got to join many school activities and meet other students of different diplomas and schools, which definitely made school much more exciting. The events I attended included the annual orientations, cross-country events, open house, school camps, sports days, and many more. And I also like to highlight that by joining the studies club at that time, I also got to help organize activities for the entire TP, the entire school of TP. So I actually worked with other student leaders from the school of business, school of IIT, school of design, school of HHS, and school of engineering. But all in all, I'm thankful for all the opportunities TP provided me, and I hope that everyone here listening today will be able to experience and gain as much as I did. Anyways, there's only so much I can share today, so I'll end off with a piece of advice. Always keep an open mind and know that there's always something to learn. I believe that here in TP, there are many opportunities waiting for you, and all you have to do is grab it. Anyways, I hope to see you all on campus next year, though I'll be graduating. It will definitely be an amazing start for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nataline, for your sharing. Um, I hope um, you know um, everyone will find um, your advice useful. Um, and also, I wanted to mention Nataline shared earlier about the um, TP fundamental subjects. So, as mentioned, um, all students in TP will have to take a series of modules, what we call the TP fundamental uh, fundamental modules. So, these are modules uh, in areas such as um, um, communications um, and also uh, entrepreneurship global studies, which aims to help train, um, develop our students' soft skills and transferable skills um, that will help them to become competent workers, but also uh, self-directed learners, uh, resilient, um, to be resilient, and also uh, problem solvers. So all these are important key skill sets that our students will need when they enter the workforce. Okay, so thank you so much once again for to all our speakers for their sharing today. Um, so just like to remind everyone to, you can post your questions on the um, pigeon hole. Um, via the QR code shown just now. And our speakers will also be um, happy to answer your questions. And hopefully if we have time, we can also have, um, you know, um, um, I'll get, um, we'll get um, our alumni and also our students um, to, to share a little bit more later. Okay, so uh, while we wait for the questions to stream in, uh, let me also briefly share about the pharmaceuticals and biologics elective cluster. So um, uh, earlier, Nataline has um, briefly shared what she learned in the pharmacy practice elective cluster. So the diploma in pharmaceutical science has got two elective clusters. So the other elective cluster is the uh, pharmaceuticals and biologics elective cluster. So in this elective cluster, students will learn the processes which are involved in the manufacturing and analysis of your pharmaceutical drugs such as you know, aspirin, paracetamol. Uh, you will also learn what are the processes involved in the manufacturing of the biopharmaceuticals, um, such as vaccines and antibodies. So this is definitely something um, you know that with the COVID-19 vaccine coming along, it's something um, that uh, will be a very um, you know, skill in demand um, sector. All right, and also in this elective clusters, students will get the opportunities to carry out their internship in leading um, multinational pharmaceutical companies, um, where they will be, you know, um, have the opportunity to take on uh, various roles um, in the drug manufacturing process. So it is definitely a very, um, you know, meaningful uh, job as well. All right, um, perhaps um, at this point, um, can we look at what are some of the um, questions? Okay, so we have a question here. After this diploma, is going for a pharmacy degree my only option? Um, so my answer is um, no, uh, because as shared earlier in the uh, at the beginning of this uh, webinar, um, which I shared uh, what are some of the different uh, career prospects. So um, pharmacy um, degree is is only one. I mean, it's one of the option, but um, I think like what Nuri has shared, um, you know, she also went on to pursue a radiation um, therapy course in SIT. So um, some of our students, uh, in fact, uh, we see in the recent years. Uh, many of our students also went on to do a pharmaceutical engineering uh, degree in SIT. Okay, so of course, um, it depends on where is um, your interest. Is it in the clinical aspect of the course or in the industry aspect of the course? So I would say the pharmacy degree is not the only uh, option if you're talking about further education um, opportunities. There are also many um, advanced diploma programs which are also available for our pharmaceutical science uh, graduates to, to take up upon uh, graduation from the Diploma in Pharmaceutical Science. Um, other possible um, um, uh, degree options will also include um, any science-related um, degree programs, such as uh, life sciences or um, you know, chemistry or even um, you know, the biological sciences, for example. 
Yep. So, okay. So it is known that there are four other polytechnics in Singapore that has the same exact course. Uh, so does this pharmaceutical science course in Termastic offer anything than the four other polytechnics do not? Um, so at this point, I mean, um, so like this um, a question rightly pointed out, uh, besides Tomasic Polytechnic, Nian Polytechnic, Nanyang Polytechnic, as well as Republic Polytechnics uh, all offer the Diploma in Pharmaceutical Science course. Um, in terms of curriculum, if you look at the subjects, um, we are actually quite similar to the subjects which are also covered in the Republic Polytechnic um, curriculum. But what um, is um, different about the Pharmaceutical Science course, I would um, one of the points I would like to mention is that uh, for our students in the Pharmacy Practice Elective Cluster, um, they do um, get to do this uh, work-based learning attachment, uh, which provides students um, uh, additional opportunities to, to work um, in a real-world setting. So this is something that is uh, unique to our course. Um, so this is in addition to the 26-week uh, enhanced internship that all uh, students will have to do when they are in the pharmaceutical science course. So for the pharmacy practice um, elective cluster students, they will get this additional work ex um, you know, um, attachment experience uh, in the work-based learning attachment where they will be attached to the retail pharmacy um, as part of their curriculum in year three before they go on for their full-time internship in the second uh, part of the um, year three. Yeah, and of course, um, in Diploma in Pharmaceutical Science, um, I mean, in TP, in ASC, we have a lot of opportunities. Um, so students, I think just now some of our, um, you know, our alumni, our also students also shared about, um, you know, what are the other opportunities, student development opportunities that our students will get to, um, you know, participate in. So all this, I think it's, uh, we want to provide a holistic um, education and also a holistic experience for the students, not only to do well um, academically to graduate with a diploma, but at the same time to uh, develop their you know, soft skills and transferable skills through the student development activities and also through the TP fundamental module, which is something that is also unique um, to Tamasic Polytechnic, the uh, TP fundamental modules. Yeah. So... What happens if you forget to inform the patients about their medicine? Um, perhaps this will be a good opportunity for me to uh, maybe invite our industry partner, uh, maybe Miss Shirley or Miss Fu would like to maybe share, um, you know, answer this question. Okay. Um, well, I was looking at this question and um, I'm not sure whether this is pertaining to whether we basically just pass the medication to patients and then we didn't tell them anything about the medicine or maybe it was something that we have missed out on informing the patients about. Uh, but uh, maybe just to share a little bit about how we usually uh, do dispensing and counselling. Okay, So whether if it's a pharmacist or a pharmacy technician, whenever we face patients, we do have to uh, check with them. We, we will have to communicate with the patients to ensure that they understand their medications well. So if they are... Um, they are not exactly having new medications from their doctors. We will uh, sometimes just check that. Is that are, are they doing well on their current medications? Are they having any uh, side effects that they have been uh, having some discomfort? If it's new medications, we will definitely ensure to go through with them the common side effects to know and how to take the dose and everything. But if we do feel that there are maybe certain points that we might have forgotten because uh, you know sometimes the patient may have a lot of medications at one go. Um, we will not hesitate to call up the patient to just clarify certain things that we might need to. Yeah, and the patients also uh, will be able to contact us freely, basically, if they have any doubts about their medication. And we have uh, telephone operators on the line. If my And a lot of times, to be honest, a lot of my telephone operators are actually my pharmacy technicians who are actually also very equipped in terms of answering uh, simple questions uh, on medications and um, uh, dosing and things like that. If they need to, they will escalate to the pharmacist. So um, not to worry, we will have uh, uh, our people actually ready to um, help the patients like, if they need any uh, information about the medicine. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Pang, for answering this question. It's a very interesting question. And I think um, through, through answering this question, we can also have a better idea what goes on in the pharmacy besides you know like what normally what we see when we when we visit the pharmacy um yep. so oh what's the working hours like for a farm tech do we need to work shift um perhaps um maybe for this question we we, we can get um also miss miss fool to to answer this question um 
and yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, maybe I will, I will just add on lah, because um, for the pharmacy technicians uh, in the hospital, like what we mentioned, I mentioned just now in my um, presentation, right? Um, supply of medication is 24-7, depending on where the location of the pharmacy is. So, uh, and again, depending on where the pharmacy technician is being uh, stationed at, okay, there might be a need for uh, shift work. Let's say if you are being uh, stationed at a &E or in inpatient, um, there will still be a need for medication supply uh, overnight. So yes, there will definitely be some form of a shift work uh, to a certain extent, but um, there are allowances for uh, pharmacy technicians who do have to do such uh, overnight shift work, even if not um, in the usual outpatient setting, uh, usually it's a five and a half day work week. Okay, and then um, there is, uh, morning shift, there's a uh, earlier shift and a later shift. Yeah, maybe not overnight shift, but there is still some kind of a shift work. Yeah, but uh, being in a hospital pharmacy, it also, man also means that your shifts are well planned. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, um, uh, ha having it taking a toll on your health or, you know, not having sufficient rest. These are all taken into account when we uh, roster shifts for our uh, pharmacy technicians. Yeah, and um, uh, we basically uh, station our pharmacy technicians according to where, uh, which area, which department uh, we need them most. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Pang. Um, perhaps at this point, can I also maybe get Nataline to also share about uh, maybe her work arrangement uh, as an intern in, um, you know, as an intern in the pharmacy? Perhaps Nataline, you can share on this part as well. So hi guys. So um, I'm currently at Ng Fong General Hospital and I'm actually about 2.5 months into my internship already. So previously I was at the outpatient pharmacy where uh, we usually only work, for interns, we usually only work on working during working hours. So my shifts are usually based around 9 to at most 6.30 only. So we are at the hospital here, we are required to work for two, two weekends during the two weekends in a month and and most we only work for about four hours per weekend only. so i would say so far for the shifts as an intern at the outpatient pharmacy is quite it's quite re relaxed relaxed for me but i still find that i have still i still got a lot of time to go home and rest as compared to what i've expected before which i thought it would be quite hard so now i'm actually in the inpatient pharmacy the timings are actually almost the same just that uh, perhaps i have a uh, I actually come earlier, about like one hour to half an hour earlier, and I actually get to go back earlier for the inpatient side because, not sure why, but I think because of uh, the uh, inpatient side, we have uh, different kinds of shifts. Like we have later shifts, which are more for the full-time workers to do. So as an intern in the hospital, I would say that the working hours are pretty comfortable for me. Okay, thank you, Nataline, for sharing. At this point, I also want to mention, um, you know, for um, the pharmaceutical um, and biologics elective clusters, our students, um, some of the students may also get to um, do shift work as interns because, uh, as you know, the manufacturing is, is 24-7. So um, students in the pharmaceuticals and biologics elective cluster may also have to do some shift work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you, Nataline. So is there another question? If you didn't get into radiation therapy, what were your other choices? So I suppose this question is for Nuri. Um, Nuri, would you like to answer this question? Hello. Okay. So um, for me, my other choices were definitely, firstly, um, pharmacy. If I didn't get into radiation therapy, I would, I would definitely consider pharmacy because, um, you know, I think um, I think pharmacy itself is really, really interesting. And it, in fact, it was actually the main reason why I actually joined pharmaceutical science in the first place. I was really, really passionate in um. Uh, medication as well as treating others. So I think um, pharmacy is definitely one of those choices. I also considered um, biological sciences at NTU as well. So these are the two causes that were really um, more uh, that were really more uh, appealing to me, in my opinion. Yeah. Thank you, Nuri. Um, yeah. So um, let us see whether there. I'm a person who is terrible at social interaction, but I inspire to be someone who loves spending my time in the laboratory researching. Uh, would this be viable for me to take up this course? Um, so maybe let me um, answer this question. Um, so like I mentioned, the Diploma in Pharmaceutical Science course has got two um, 
elective cluster, which is the pharmacy practice elective cluster. And I think through the sharing that, um, you know, from our industry partners and also our students, um, we hear that there is actually a lot of uh, maybe patient interaction where um, the uh, students or, you know, the PTs will have to interact with patients. Um, but the other aspect of our course is the pharmaceuticals and um, biologics where students will um, mainly be working in, say, in a plant. Um, when I say plant, I mean, I mean uh, manufacturing plant setting or more in the lab uh, where they do, uh, they perform quality, uh, quality control on the pharmaceuticals. Um, so in our course, um, students will get to, will be exposed to both aspects of the course. Um, so at the end of the diploma course, um, it's really up to our students' uh, interest and passion to either pursue um, the clinical aspect of the course or um, in the, um, the manufacturing aspect of the course, which is the industry aspect of the course. So if you are somebody who likes to um, spend time in the lab, um, definitely in our course, you will get um, opportunities to, to um, you know, uh, do hands-on in the wet lab. Um, so I would say this is um, uh, definitely a course that you may want to consider if, uh, you know, your interest is also in uh, laboratory research. Um, but of course, I think, um, you know, if you say that you're somebody who is terrible at social interaction, but I believe in this course because our students get a lot of opportunities to do role playing in the pharmacy practice module. So definitely this is, I think, one way to build our students' confidence in the course. And who knows after the taking all these various modules, um, you know, you, you will find that your, your communication skills uh, will, will be, you know, will improve and you also feel more confident um, with uh, social interaction. Yep, so thank you for, for this question. How does the school prepare you for your internship? Um, so for internship, um, you know, like I think earlier we mentioned, uh, I think Nataline uh, mentioned about the TP fundamental modules, which are taken by our students from uh, across uh, year one to year three. So those modules really um, uh, prepare students in terms of the soft skills um, you know, like communication skill, persuasive, uh, persuasive communication, uh, workplace communication. So, um, in fact, prior to internship, students are also required to attend interviews uh, to, to submit their resume and cover letters. So we have, um, you know, the TP fundamental uh, modules will take care of that aspect. Um, of course, prior to going out for internship, uh, we have a pre-internship training program where, you know, we... Um, we have refresher course where you know we 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 our lecturers will conduct um, you know some refresher modules for our students to you know refresh what they have learned in year one and year two so that you know um, they they are all uh, you know they have all the they can remember all the things that they have learned in year one and year two so that is more the technical aspect of the um, preparation okay so um, in terms of the um, the soft skill aspect um, we also have uh, worked together with our um, career center in TP, uh, where the, um, the, the uh, our colleagues from the career center, they will um, prepare our students by, you know, sharing with them what are some of the do's and don'ts uh, for internship, you know, uh, how, what are the things that they can, you know, uh, what are the things that they can do to, um, you know, say secure a job right after internship, because we believe that many, for many students, uh, securing a job at the end of internship is definitely one of their um, goals. Okay, so how, what are some of the things that they can do, um, you know, to, to make themselves, um, you know, um, to be, to be um, identified by the company, um, you know, to be offered a job at the end of the internship. Um, we also understand that um, internship can be overwhelming. Uh, because for many of our students, it may be the very first time that they're stepping out into the working world. So we also have, um, um, you know, we work with our student care team uh, where we provide training in terms of peer support and also how to manage their stress um, during internship. So all these are done to prepare our students for the internship. Yeah. Um, maybe Nataline, would you like to share a little bit more like, you know, whether some of this... Um, training has it been helpful or, or what do you think actually helped you the most um, for the pre-internship training mm, for me i think that the pre-internship training was pretty helpful uh, for two points the first thing is when they shared about how should we cope with our stress during internship because i think um though many many students do do part-time job outside of their school during the holidays i think some of my friends didn't really have a job prior to internship so they didn't really know how a workplace setting will look like and how should they react so i think the the talk about how how a that introduces us how a workplace setting is is like and how should we react to different situations was quite helpful to them in kind of like preempting them what was going to happen next and then 
for the uh, for the refresher course, um, I just want to point out that uh, just now in my sharing, I said that we started learning how to dispense medications all, all the way from yeah, year 1.2 already. So the rep, so from year 1.2 onwards, we actually learn about different medications or different conditions from year one all the way until year two. So you may be thinking why, like how can we remember all the medications and everything, right? So the refresher course actually helps to like re-emphasize on very common conditions that we really have to know once we enter the internship, which was very, very helpful because uh, having to like dig out all your notes and like, going through everything may be very overwhelming. So the school actually helps to like guide us in like, remembering all this information, which I personally found very, very helpful, especially because I'm interning in a hospital. So those, those settings really helped me also. And I also think that um, uh, in our projects that we are given during school time, they also in a way helps us with our internship. Because right now at my internship at Antipong General Hospital, I also have weekly classes at the hospital where we have to go through different kinds of conditions. And I actually remember that we have a uh, project similar to what, what I'm doing right now, which is how I must research on different kinds of research on the conditions and medications to help um, with these with the medications to help these conditions. So during my sec during my project days, I actually learned the useful skills on which websites to use to find out all these information that are reliable and how to bet the reliability on the internet. So I use I can, I'm actually using those skills right now in my internship to prepare for these classes, which I find really, really good. And that is why I think that how the that is how I feel like the preparatory side of things really helped me for my internship. Yeah. Thank you, Nataline. Okay, so it's very encouraging to hear like how um, all these modules can come together um, and later, you know, put into practice in the internship. Okay, um, may I know if there are other questions? Oh, what are some of the challenges you face and uh, overcome, especially during the pandemic? Um, I'm not sure if this is a very general question, but I think this question is very relevant to especially our healthcare, um, you know, our, uh, you know, uh, the healthcare workers who are the frontliners. So maybe I can I um, um, uh, ask Miss Pang or uh, Miss Fu to maybe want to to share, um, you know, uh, what are some of the challenges that you may face in the current uh, pandemic situation in the hospital? Um, I think during the circuit breaker time, uh, it was especially challenging in terms of being able to get the medication to the patients timely and also ensuring that they have a consistent supply of medication when they are not exactly able to come to the hospital. Um, yeah, so and that's why uh, during the presentation, I actually mentioned that medication delivery service actually became um, sort of a fixture uh, in the hospital operations, pharmacy operations. And um, this was something that we were really, uh, we really had to figure out within a short period of time to uh, make sure that the workflow is, uh, is smooth and uh, also be able to uh, uh, maybe smooth down any kinks or any loopholes, any gaps that, that we might have uh, during uh, the delivery of the medication to the patients. Uh, because medication being something that's a little more sensitive and there's PDPA issues, uh, we need to take care of many aspects when we do delivery. It's not like, um, you know, delivery of usual items. And that is where our pharmacy technicians actually play a really, really great role because they really support us, uh, the, the delivery service, in terms of ensuring that are packed timely, the, uh, the, the cost from the patients are attended to as much as possible because we had an influx of calls from the public and our pharmacy technicians have, they are really our troopers, they, they were answering calls from the moment they step in until the time that they can work. <laughs> and um, uh, I think this uh, definitely uh, something that we, uh, that, that was something that we had to overcome during the pandemic. And now that um, uh, circuit breaker is over, we are entering to uh, going to enter into phase three. Um, we we do we do know that you know uh, things may not exactly go back to previous, and we we need to learn to adapt with the times and also with the situation. And that is um, something that uh, we acknowledge, <clears throat> and uh, we will also uh, move forward with together.
Thank you, Ms. Pang. Yeah, so I think we, we are really grateful for all the um, the healthcare workers and the frontliners, uh, especially during this time of pandemic, to make sure that, you know, all these things can still go on, um, you know, uh, not as like normal, but as close as possible to normal. Um, maybe also I would like to maybe pose this question to Nuri, because, um, oh, sorry, the previous question about how has, um, you know, what are some of the challenges um, that is faced during this pandemic? Because I think Nuri graduated in the midst of the, um, pandemic and so maybe how has that affected um, you know maybe um, uh, your your course for example you are also enrolled you know uh, currently pursuing your your degree right so how has that affected you okay so uh, for me I think um, the whole entire pandemic I think for the degree itself um, studies wise I would say uh, it has definitely impacted like our terms of learning so um, all of our lectures um, are basically delivered through um, online as well so I think it's similar to poly as well. Um, but the what we still do have is our um, anatomy lessons. So those are actually carried out in real life. Um, so in actual um, NUS uh, anatomy hall. So where we actually get to um, uh, uh, actually witness uh, or actually um, look at cadavers and as well as the different um, body parts and all that. So I think um, despite the pandemic situation, it was still possible for us to um, have um, those um, lab sessions carried out for us to um, actually um, gain, gain a better understanding on like the different anatomy. Um, but I think uh, I think post-graduate post-graduation wise, um, it'll definitely be um, getting a job because you know um, there was a sudden influx of you know uh, people of people who are um, you know losing their jobs and. Uh, things like that and that actually made it difficult for I think graduates in general to actually um, get a job post-graduation because um, they have to not only compete with just um, fresh graduates but also with um, uh, you know people who have just lost their jobs and all that so um, uh, definitely there were there were uh, definitely some uh, a lot of um, government um, help um, that actually helped with that uh, which also included like the um, I think some internship opportunities um, uh, with uh, or attachment opportunities with or train, I think it, they were called trainership programs, trainership programs. Yeah, so where actually um people uh, actually got the chance to um uh go to the industry and as well as um you know uh gain a job from there. Um, but um I think there was a just a period of time where um you know these um these initiatives were not um you know um were not developed yet. So I think that was the part where I think a lot of graduation graduates actually face um a lot of these problems. And yeah, they actually I think brought about um quite a lot of anxiety among my peers. But I think overall um a lot of them were actually took um took advantage of it by actually um took advantage of the situation by actually picking up um uh the TB graduate Kickstarter program. So mm -hmm. which actually um enabled students to or graduates to use their um five hundred dollar credits if I remember correctly to actually take up um short courses such as like uh, programming or behavioral insights or even um I think uh I think there were quite there were quite a number of um very useful skills in fact. So um yeah I think uh definitely I think TP graduates can definitely look forward to that because I think um they are offered to um a lot of graduates. So yeah. Thank you, Nuri, so much for, for that. I think what one thing she, she mentioned is about the uh, career Kickstarter, which is uh, something, uh, an initiative uh, um, by T uh, TP, Tomasic Poly, because we know that um, because many of our students are graduating in the midst of the pandemic, so um, TP actually initiated this career Kickstarter program where um, there are, we also provide um, you know job opportunities uh, for students, uh, for graduates who have just recently graduated, for them to take up jobs um, in TP itself. And I'm also very happy to say that you know, um, many of our graduates have benefited from this career Kickstarter program. And also, um, also very grateful from our industry partners because um, during this pandemic, I think um, many of our industry partners are also reaching out to us to, you know, share their job opportunities. All right. Um, yeah, so I think we, we have uh, pretty much come to the end of the webinar. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank our speakers for today. Thank you for spending the time with us. Uh, though we cannot answer all your queries and your questions today, but um, hopefully this chat session uh, has given you some idea of the possible uh, career opportunities that you can uh, look forward to when you join the Diploma in Pharmaceutical Science course. Uh, we will be having our virtual open house in January, so do join us for the virtual open house and we will be uh, sending, you know, um, sharing more details uh, in our website soon. Uh, we also hope to improve our future session. Um, Essentially, this is the very first time we are doing like a live webinar. So uh, please give us your feedback uh, via a scan of this QR code for the form. And once again, thank you so much for spending your time 
are with us and we hope you have a good week ahead. Thank you so much. Bye.